Hey, what's up my friends? How are y'all doing? I hope pretty good. We have a beautiful day here down in Tennessee. Um, got a special video today. Uh, shout out to Tim. I appreciate the uh, suggestion. He had the idea of doing this episode and uh, has been a supporter, a good friend of the channel for a long time now, basically since I stood up. So, um, Anyhow, we are doing an episode on finding good spots to fish from the bank. Basically, how to locate fish, how to break down your uh, your whole your kind of area you're fishing in. Um, just a disclaimer: I know this area very, very well. I know exactly where to find them. Um, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of try to do my best to uh, describe the features I look for to find decent spots to hit from the bank. That'll probably uh, help get you a bite, help get you some fish on. If you found this video helpful, let me know. I could put out probably a dozen episodes on how to do it for different conditions, water clarity, weather, uh, you know, um, bait selection, that sort of thing. But I'm going to try to do a simple, simplified version and really uh, throw it together and, and see how it comes out. But anyhow, guys, thanks for joining me. Let's get to it and let's get some good fish on. But uh, right before we start, I'll show you what we're using. We are throwing the slider original charlie brewer so this is a basically what i like to call a do it all type bait it is your um i got one on right now a three inch oh got some grass on it it's like a three inch little paddle tail slash grub sort of deal and i got it rigged on an eighth ounce hook right now so uh the reason i call it a do it all type bait is because I can use it as a search bait to locate fish, uh, especially on this light gear I'm using right now. I'm using some BFS, some ca light casting gear. I can throw it deep, um, retrieve it, kind of try to find fish that way. I can also fish it real slow off the bottom. It's small enough that it's small. En it's the perfect size for either decent size bass to hit it or smaller crappie, uh, yellow, white bass to hit it as well. So pretty much all my target species will eat this bait and um it can be uh any kind of predatory type fish is gonna hit it so that is why i selected this bait today to do this episode normally i would bring probably about three different types of bait when i hit a brand new body of water you're uh, a, a good bank uh bank busting bait with something i can roll up and down the bank i bring a search bait maybe like a spinner bait or a rooster tail and then i bring a slow popping bait but this one will do it all for us today so uh, if you enjoy the video and want to see what gear I'm using, uh, hear me ramble on about the bait, stick with me to the end and I'll show you exactly what we're using. But let's get to, let's get to fishing and I'll tell you exactly how I break down these uh, little areas to fish at. All right, my friends. So I have fished this area very, very often. If you do follow the channel, you know I do. I know it really, really well. However, the subject is near and dear to my heart because when I first got into fishing, I didn't have all that much guidance. I was uh, kind of just aimlessly casting out, reeling in, hoping to get a bite. And once I kind of learned how to break down an area, it, it became a lot more productive for me. I was having a lot better days out there fishing, a lot more fun. So basically, we're gonna start out here. This is a marina. This could be applied to like a, a small lake, a pond, that sort of thing. Basically, this is like a small lake itself. Uh, got the Cumberland River running in, if you can see that area right there. So we're starting here. The reason we are starting here is because there's a pocket. So typically when I go to a new body of water, I'm going to locate the pockets and the structure. So like your docks like that over there, uh, pockets, that mouth of the river where it gets kind of narrow over there. We're going to jump over there and see if we can't get anything. But we're starting out in the pocket. Probably going to have a lot of crappie, brim, that sort of thing, if you got them. A, a good place to start looking for them is in these pockets. Um, riprap is great. The bank is great. Uh, I'll place, whenever I walk up to a new spot, I cast right down the bank. So a lot of times bass will be hiding, you know, 10, five feet off maybe. Uh, see that little shad shoot up right there. And they'll typically, uh, your bait's gonna like just run your bank back and forth looking for food or cover. Uh, and bass will be hiding out trying to get those. Let's see if we can't get this fish to bite. I'm also trying to be as observant as possible for things like that. like. Little fish jumping right out there. This is a new bait to me too. It looks like it. Sh There's no reason why it shouldn't get hit. <laughs> but we're gonna kind of skirt this bank. Then we'll move on to uh, kind of working our pocket. And perspective is everything. I'd like to stand, place a bunch of casts over on this side, 
back and forth from that pocket and then I'll go to that side and work it that way. And if I don't get a bite within, mm, say 20, 30 minutes, I'm gonna jump spots. Unless I'm seeing a lot of activity, a lot of bass jump, and then I'm probably gonna try out a different type of bait, maybe a square bill or something I can get a reaction strike from. But that kind of breaks down our first little area and why I chose that. So really just looking for abnormalities. We got like a quarter mile of rip wrap over there. There's about a mile of rip wrap. And uh, there are only a few different pockets here. So that's a, a great place to start out. Okay, so something hit us. So that tail's kind of curled up on there. I'm gonna have to be, this is an extremely sensitive rod and I'm using a very small hook. Alright guys, so the first spot, kind of a bust. Had a couple bites, couldn't land them. I think they were skipjack. I am seeing bass around here and a ton of bait. However, we are going to jump to the next one and come on back. I don't like to stay at a place more than a half hour without a bite, so or without catching a decent fish. So we're, we're just going to keep on moving, see if there's a better spot right now. We can always come back to this one. Alright guys, so we are coming up on a bridge. We are going to hit that. Basically, I just walked here a uh, Good 15 minute walk and uh there's just a whole lot of rip a whole lot of the same thing which could take the time to kind of skirt that but we're just going to mainly structures where i think there's going to be fish at so let's hit this one a couple times and see if we can't get lucky not gonna lie i don't push this spot a lot so i don't catch a lot of fish here but never know um now we're gonna use our I don't feel we have been using. Oh. Getting hit, got one. Nice fish. Oh, all right. Well, quick release, guys, quick release. That was a skipjack. That's what I was thinking. I was busting a lot of these little shad we were seeing around. So this whole area really is going to be a money. Like, it's nice and sheltered from the wind, from the elements, a little bit more from the waves. And, I mean, you got a dock right there, so you got a ton of cover. You got this bridge, which is a good amount of cover, and you got the rocks. So this is just a, a really good area to hit. Matter of fact, I used to come down here with like eight foot diving crankbaits and just do work. I'm about to try to get whatever aggressive bass is chasing that. I can't tell if it's skipjack or bass. First fish, wow, beautiful spot. Gorgeous spot right there. <laughs> Look at that. Healthy. Has a little damage up on that fin. I don't know if that's from a gar or something. A little pretty red eye. Alright, that's what I'm talking about. That's what's chasing all this bait all crazy around here. I'll show y'all on the big camera. All right, guys, so really pretty uh, spotted bass right here. Our first fish. Let me see if I can't get some better lighting. Check her out. Just absolutely gorgeous. There's one right behind me jumping, so we'll try to get that on, too. All right, I'm going to get her back in the water. I'm going to keep going at it. So our third spot is free. Uh, I had to wait a little bit, just kind of messing around. Anyhow, this spot is really, really good. Um, the reason I like this one, so any place I see water coming in, I'm going to hit. It looks like there's a shoe in there. It's a shame. I hate all the garbage from these kind of more popular spots. However, so we got our 
fresh water running in here. So if you have an area with a lot of runoff, any kind of fresh water, you know, your pipes that spew out drainage into them, those are gonna be sure spots for fish. So this one has that fresh oxygen and water coming in. There's another pocket right there and there's a ridge of rock. You can't really see it. However, it does run out to a steep drop off. This is like the ideal spot. So it's normally first thing, first time when I come here in the morning, this is the first spot I usually check. So what I like to do is cast out to that drop off. Just let our bait sink. And then I slowly bounce it around there. Seeing if there's any fish waiting to ambush bait right off of there and we'll work it around and this is just an awesome multi-species spot if you guys do follow the channel you've seen me catch a ton of crappie here um really good spot in general got one of my biggest basses i have caught in the state here We're just going to work this spot for a while, cast out over that ridge, into that pocket, up in this open water in between that dock, you know, around the riprap. We're probably going to get bit. This is probably going to be our winter spot of the day. We only have one fish on so far. Not too concerned. Like I said, I came out here at like noon, probably the worst time to come out and try to catch some fish. It is getting a little bit later now. Um, I'm, I'm confident if I had a crank bait on a good reaction uh, bait I probably would have caught more fish but brought what I brought brought it for a reason so let's try to do some work I think when the uh, sun starts going down a little bit more we're gonna have a lot more luck out here Yep. Try to keep them low. <laughs> you gotta pulling him out. Oh my goodness, that's a big old one. Big old skipjack. I saw him jump just as soon as we had that bait in the water. Oh, this, these. I do have a <laughs> episode out on these guys. These guys will wriggle, wriggle a hook right into you real, real quick. And they're very slick. Started doing it right there. Get this out of you, buddy. Oh, and they are so slimy. A real pain in the butt sometimes. There we go. Nice skip check right there. All right, that's what I'm talking about, my friends. Got another fish on. I was worried I was gonna come out here and try to give advice on how to catch them from the bank and we were gonna get skunked or something. I got a feeling the bite's gonna really start picking up now. Time of day is a real big thing too. All right. Yeah, just nice looking, nice looking skipjack. That's a big one. So I was thinking that, uh, so my blood or your blood, you poked me a little bit. No, that's his. I was a bit concerned, um, but we weren't out at the ideal time either. Cool, cool, cool. I guess one thing I didn't touch on is if you try all these things, try all these spots and you're not getting that bite, change your time of day. Come first, first light or dusk. If, if it's not winter time, those are the two best times to catch fish. Winter, I go middle afternoon when it's hottest, but for the most part, that first light time, those low light conditions are going to be money for you. Um, and if all else fails and you're at a spot, oh, got another one. If you're at a spot and you're just, I think this is a skip check here, I can't really tell. Nope. Cool. Yellow. Ooh, it's got lesions all over him. Him. Got such tiny little mouths. Nice little uh, yellow fellow right there. He's kind of almost silvery. Maybe it's just my glasses. Oh, there, there it is. He's got like some kind of infection going on. <laughs> now the bite's picking up. So as I was saying, uh, if you're at a spot, man, and 
the, the lights just off and time of day is not mattering and you're, you're trying all these little little tips and tricks you know sometimes i'll just go out there and i will work a clock so basically i'll start casting out right in front of me at noon i'll go one two three four i'm just making casts i'll, I'll work a clock or a 180 like that and then i'm gonna walk right out of that casting range like and repeat rinse and repeat rinse and repeat and it's a real boring way to fish and it gets old fast but i mean if you're just out to be out and you're, you're struggling you're gonna cover a ton of water i'd do that with like a rooster tail or a underspin or something like that you can you can surely get yourself a bite like that covering as much water as possible sometimes you know they're just not gonna bite but but uh you know as i was saying really come up to your spot your new spot or spot you got and uh search for those abnormalities in the water you know your your corners your rock ridges drainage areas that sort of thing anytime you feel like you're pinging off of rocks or something just keep casting over them there's probably bait hiding out there probably predators around there but i hope this helps out guys we're just gonna keep catching some fish now that bite's starting to pick up that's what i'm saying about this spot man it is there's a ton of different fish that come around here here we were fishing for probably been out here about three hours trying to make this video could only only got one little bite you know i was picking up we got two within a cast i think That scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Just let him take that drag. I have a very, I'm running six pound um, on a light rod. I'm quite fond of it, not trying to break right now. Dear Lord, this is a massive drum, or at least a drum with a lot of fight in it. I'm just gonna let it wear itself out. Looks like I have a really good hook on it. It just choked that bait. All right, come on in. To the rocks it's all tired out yeah that's a big one that is a big one oh. got you <laughs> look at that tank oh my gosh look at that belly get in my belly you see it's got little tiny teeth right up there not big enough to really hurt you. That's why I always lift these bad boys. When the hooks are really deep in them, they're kind of useless sometimes. All right. The hook is really in there. Oh man, you done. There we go. Bent my hook and busted my bait. Let's get a weight on her. O's. Euros. Five pounds, six ounces. That's a big one. All right, guys, look at the size of this drone. Man, that's a tank for sure. Making my thumb lock up. I gotta switch hands. There we go. Look at that. That is a big old drum. Five pounds, six pounds drum on that BFS light rod and it put up a fight. Fought me like a little carp. 
I'm gonna get her back in. We're gonna keep on going. It's turning out to be quite the multi-species day. I knew this bait would uh would be like that, so get her back in. She's peeing all over me. They always get me. Those drums, you can never you never uh can see them because of their color. They'd just be a lurking right on the bank. Smoke your bait and run. Let's do a little damage report. Yeah. This thing is toast. Well, that was cool. That's certainly the uh, biggest fish I've brought in on this, this rod in particular This since I've been BFS fishing. I always have a fear of a carp taking my bait and having to fight it. But, yeah, that was neat, man. Looks like it's turned out to be a pretty solid day. Let's see what else we can get on. Nice yellow. Man, we've been getting some messed up. Who's chomping on you, son? I actually did a, I gotta edit it. I did like a little micro fishing episode. Well, it was with BFS stuff, but extremely tiny baits. And I was targeting mainly yellow bass. And I had to scoop one up and grab him and he cut the heck out of me which had really concerned me uh before that's something i really don't care about but i mean it was not like a need to go to the doctor type cut it wasn't bad but i had just uh been talking to a dude in the parking lot guys will older gentleman will see me fishing here and just ask me questions and whatnot and he told me he had got cut um not by a fish or something he said he fell down in his boat scraped up his leg and it got soaked like by some like kind of dirty water. And he told me it turned into staph infection. He had to get a hip replacement because of it. It's like always carry peroxide. Of course, I didn't come out with peroxide. And then I got spined really bad. That just kind of slit me right open. I think it was either the spine or the gill plate. And I'm like, great. I might need a finger replacement, but that was all good. I got home, took a shower and stuff. All right, guys, it has been long since our last fight. I think the spot still is really, really good. But we're going to hop over to the other side. We can kind of beat that bank, and we're just going to get a different perspective on this spot. Rocks are super sketchy. Luckily, they're dried out and not slick. So when it floods here, it floods up into that tree line. Like, literally, no riprap exposed, nothing. And it is a ton of fun to throw a jig out there. <laughs> Got one. Nice fish. Can I get it in here? Keep it down, keep it down. Oh, come on, come on. Oh man, that's not a nice fish at all. All right, no, you're a nice fish, buddy. You're a nice fish. It felt monstrous out there. These things can not fight too. All right, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful colored yellow. Man, I probably got everybody's hopes up. I got my hopes up. I thought I, I thought I had on a nice bass. No, I can't imagine what I three pounder would be like from over there geez probably wouldn't have been able to land it 
there's a nice little yellow put up one heck of a fight my friend one heck of a fight out there there we go sometimes all we need is a little change of perspective to keep that bite flowing Hey, what's up my friends? I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I had a great time making it as always. Uh, so the bait we were using is this Charlie Brewer's Slider Originals. I'm gonna imagine that's the name of the, uh, the brand. Uh, and it is the three inch bass grub it says on the back here. I'm quite fond of this one. I gotta say, I really, really enjoy fishing it. I have another pack, so I'm excited about that too. So it is that real nice, um, so there's an, uh, yeah, pearl, okay, so pearl is marked on it, that's the color. It's a really nice translucent pearl color too. Um, love the length, I think three inches for where I'm fishing is really just that magic number. I usually shoot anywhere uh, bait wise uh, for like a little paddle tail or grub from 2.75 to 3.5 inches maybe uh, that's gonna get majority of my species are gonna bite that that I'm fishing for oh man I hear my little man right now in his room getting into getting into some toys dumping some stuff out you guys know how it goes I'll be cleaning that up in a little bit if you got kids if you don't prepare for it because <laughs> they love dumping stuff out so I rig those on a Bass Pro Shops walleye angler unpainted round jig head so not all jig heads, ball jigs are um, created equal, that's for sure. These are really, really nice. I, I like them. Um, just a good solid jig head, really inexpensive from Bass Pro. You can buy them, this is a 25 pack. I think I grabbed two of them. And they have a bunch of different sizes and size hooks on them. This is a really nice one. It, uh, it, it's very, uh, profile the hook the size of the hook is really small so it just it fits that bait perfectly and it reduces the amount of snaggage I had I actually did not have a lot of snags today when you're fishing an open hook bait and bottom bouncing it like I was I had a big risk of snag so with the smaller hook less risk and it fit just really really well on the bait I like those uh, for sure actually my buddy uh, Kyle friend of our channel is whipping me up a batch of jig heads right now I'm stoked but, um, Rod, we were throwing this on BFS gear, throwing on the Dobbin Sierra Series Ultra Finesse at 700 Charlie, that seven foot one piece rod. It is a light, moderate action with an extra fast tip. So it is a lot of fun to fish. I got that with the Corrado BFS XG. That is a 8.2 gear ratio reel. So ton of fun to fish. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Had a great time making it as always. If you're still with me, if you enjoy the content, give me a like, subscribe. Um, just gives me more motivation to get out there and make more videos. But uh, take care of yourselves, guys. Take care of each other and hope y'all get some good fish on. I'll see you next time.